Hello Grade 5. Our objective for today is to use fraction benchmark numbers to assess the reasonableness of addition and subtraction equations. Before we get into the equations, let's think of what our benchmark numbers will be for today. So we will be using 0, a half, and 1. We'll be using this number line today in order to help us with the fractions and the equations that we're dealing with. Before we move into equations, let's work separately on some fractions to see whether they're closer to zero, closer to half, or closer to a whole. So for example, if I had the fraction four out of 10, how would I think about it? My whole is 10, and what will be half of 10? It will be five, right? And I see I only need one jump from four tenths to get into 5, 10, therefore 4 out of 10 is closer to the half. So, and if I had to put it on my number line, I will put it somewhere here because I only need a tiny step to go from 4 tenths to 5 tenths, which I know 5 out of 10 is a half, as 5 is half of 10. Let's work with a different fraction. What if I have 1 out of 15? I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to make the decision. Is 1 out of 15 closer to 0? A half or one? Okay, how would I think about that? How many more pieces do I need for, for one out of 15 to get into the whole? I need 14 out of 15 so I can get to the whole, which is one. So this is very far away. It's just one piece out of 15. So Reasonably, this will be at the very beginning of our number line and it's closer to zero. All right, now let's try four out of seven. How would I go about this? Let's think of our benchmark numbers. I have zero, a half, and one. It cannot be close to zero because I'm already having four pieces out of seven. So let's see how it compares to the half and the whole. I know half of seven is three and a half. And in order for four out of seven to get into seven out of seven, which is a whole, I need three more sevenths. Therefore, this four out of seven is closer to three and a half, which is a half. So if I were to position four out of seven into my number line, I will put it here. Because as you see, I need three more jumps in order to get to the whole. I have five out of seven, six out of seven, and then the whole, which is seven out of seven. So that will be one, two, and three. Nevertheless, a half, which is three and a half out of seven, is way closer to four sevenths. I have less distance to cover in order to get to this benchmark number instead of the whole. All right, now let's practice with a couple of equations. Let's say we have to deal with a half plus three quarters. For the past two weeks, we have been learning different strategies to add and subtract unlike fractions. Today, the focus is mostly on mental math. So we're going to try and solve these equations without a paper and pencil. Let's think about this expression. Let's see each fraction separately. I have a half, which could be 5 out of 10, right? Which means it could be 50% of something, also 0.5 of something, right? I also know that 3 quarters is more than a half, as a half is 2 out of 4, therefore, three quarters is way bigger than the half. And three quarters is the same as 75% of something. As one quarter is 25%, three quarters is 75%. So what do we know about the total value of this without trying to solve it? How would I think about it? Since three quarters is more than half, and on top of it, 
we need to add another half to it, that would be greater than a whole. It's like adding 50 cents and 75 cents. The answer would be more than a dollar. If we look at the original equation and modify it a little bit, I have a half plus two quarters instead of three quarters. That's a half and a half, which gives us one. However, I still have another quarter to add as I have three quarters in my original equation. So my answer would be one and one quarter, which of course is greater than one. All right, let's look at a different equation. We have four out of 10 plus one third. We want to evaluate whether this equation is bigger or smaller than one. Let's take each fraction separately. I have four out of 10. Let's think of our benchmark numbers. Where is this closer to? And it's worth considering whether four out of 10 is bigger or smaller than a half. I know that half is five out of 10. Therefore, four out of 10 is smaller than a half. Now, if I think of a third, I know half of three is two and a half. Therefore, our second fraction as well is smaller than a half. So let's go back to our original equation. Is four out of 10 plus one out of three more or less than one? If I have two fractions that they're less than a half, definitely this answer is smaller than one. All right, let's take a look at a subtraction problem. Let's say I have four out of six minus one out of five. I want to estimate whether the answer is closer to zero, half, or one. What I would do, I need to, again, think of each fraction separately. So let's look at four out of six. And I need to compare it to the benchmark numbers that I have here, zero, half, and one. Four out of six is really close to a half because I know half is three out of six. It is bigger and I need only one out of six to go from four six into three six, which is a half. Now, let's compare this one out of six with one out of five. In this subtraction problem, I need to subtract the fifth from four out of six. So if I look at one six and one fifth separately, I know that a fifth is slightly bigger than a six because if I split a hole in five pieces, those pieces will be of course bigger than when I split that hole into six pieces. Therefore, if I subtract the fifth from four out of six, is not enough to get me to zero. It will be very, very close to one and a half because again, I need to subtract one six from four six in order to get to a half. But in my equation, I have to subtract one fifth, which is slightly bigger than six. So that will not get me that far away from a half. So this equation is closer to a half.